The quality of Magic the Gathering cards is wildly inconsistent, and it should not be. When opening any given Magic the Gathering pack from any given set, be it a draft set or special set or pre-constructed product, you are rolling the dice and your cards can emerge anywhere on a scale of good to not good to extremely bad. Given the rising cost of Magic the Gathering and the resulting rising profits, I do not feel it should be this way. Magic the Gathering needs to prioritize quality assurance and control so that not only should no one ever open cards like this, this is the most recent example, but it is far from the first. Commander Legends Collector Boosters. The premium priced, now $300 per box, of 12 Booster Packs product, which overwhelmingly is filled with foils that are detrimentally curled, improperly inked, or otherwise suffering from a total lack of quality control. This wasn't just a random bad box. I and others have opened multiples, and these are just a few examples I've put together to try and highlight, it's often a little difficult on camera, not only the bad curling, never mind curling, yes, foils curl, but the poor inking, the improper sheen, the clouding, and just terrible quality of these cards. Please let me be clear. This is not about how foils curl. Foils have always curled. Foils in other card games curl. It is a result of the very nature of how foils are made. But I am speaking here not of the fact they curl, rather of the fact that poor quality of printing materials and other manufacturing factors have led to people who can end up with foils like these. But we've seen this throughout other sets as well. This is not limited to Commander Legends, that's just the set everyone's opening now. Here are some examples from other people, but I don't want to pour through Reddit posts or tweets sent my way. I cannot convey how myriad those examples are. And again, not in any way limited to Commander Legends collector boosters. Those just happen to be the most recent and outrageous examples. Secret layer foils are overwhelmingly terrible quality. Print issues ran rampant in Jumpstart. And Jumpstart didn't have foils, so again, this isn't just about foils. But we saw in Jumpstart misprints, excessive inking errors. And that was a problem that was also present in other sets. I'm sorry, but there's no reason that this should happen except perhaps as a rare case of an isolated print error. But I guarantee the comments of this video will be filled with customers voicing that this has happened to them. It is not universal, but it is widespread enough, and it should not be. These cards should never have been allowed to leave the factory looking like this. Wizards of the Coast could possibly attribute many of these problems to production difficulties during the pandemic. Well, Actually, Wizards of the Coast will likely never acknowledge or offer anything but possibly the faintest of corporate speak about the issue. But even if they were to directly speak on this, I would not believe it could be attributed to COVID because this has been happening since before COVID. It has been years now since the once universal high quality of Magic the Gathering cards took a near universal nosedive with a cardstock issue that thankfully appears to have abated. But while the cardstock problem has become less intense and widespread, it still has not been resolved to the point of universal consistency as it once was, as it was throughout the game's history. With each new set that comes out, the discussion is inevitably raised, how is the cardboard this time? Is it good this time or bad this time? Well, it's better than last time, but worse than the time before that. Actually, my packs from this location are not as bad as my packs from this location and on and on. Again, even with the card stock improved, there is inconsistency between each set and sometimes even within each set. There is no universal quality assurance anymore. And I believe there should be. I believe this should be a priority. This year, like last year, and the year before, we can hear that Magic the Gathering made more money than ever before. They certainly have sold more products than ever before. But I cannot help but draw parallels between this and other recent gaming controversies relating to companies that are more than willing to take your money and then not feel obliged to deliver a quality working product. 
I do not believe these cards can be considered quality or even working. Even the best of them, were tournament play currently existing, would not be allowed in tournament play. But never mind tournament play. No one should buy a Commander Legends booster pack for Christmas, open it, and get cards that are essentially dull and defective. Here's more of a personal example. I was cracking those packs for the collector booster box game, and unlike the usual booster box game, these are really for me to keep, because I don't sell them in that challenge. I was really excited when I saw this card, because I was going to put it in my blinged out all foil Tesa EDH. I mean, Tesa will not tolerate non-blinged out foils, correct? And as I was looking at the dull quality of this card, how it's a foil and yet only barely, gross, muted colors, faded, dissipated, I said to myself, Tesa wouldn't tolerate this in her deck, and I just shrugged and wanted to throw it aside. Guess I'm gonna sell it. Guess I'm gonna sell it after all. And no, please don't offer to send me a nice quality one that you have. I can get one. But I wanted this one from the pack I had cracked. And just think about all those people out there that aren't on Twitter and Reddit and aren't going to know about, oh, collect the UPC and send it into Wizards and all this, this terrible labyrinthine return and exchange process. This shouldn't be allowed out the door. People should crack open their cards and get to put them in their decks, competitive or kitchen table or anywhere in between. And again, my point is to the inconsistency. They can make these cards better because I have examples of them better. Here we see the basic, cheap set essentially going out correctly, while the premium product with the giant price tag cannot be bothered to make sure that it's going out correctly. I even mentioned this in my previous video, but here we have two foils from the same booster box. One of them looks fine, just fine. And the other, ironically, the more premium, quote unquote, of the two, is dull, cloudy, matted. I remember when I first saw it, I wasn't even sure it was a foil. Something has gone wrong in the process here. Again, errors happen, mistakes happen, but they should not happen this consistently. And they certainly shouldn't happen in the premium, they shouldn't happen in any product, premium or otherwise. Prioritize quality control. Prioritize the quality of your cardboard. Prioritize the quality of your printing. Do not let defective product go out the door. Your reputation drops each time that you do. There is no more to this video than that a demonstration of the quality of Magic the Gathering cards. And this isn't even a video attacking Wizards of the Coast. I don't need to attack Wizards of the Coast. I just need to show what their product is, and this is what their product is, right out of the pack. Those images speak for themselves. The testimonies found on user forums and social media, Reddit, Facebook, and Twitter, they're filled with others doing the same. This isn't just what foils do, because it isn't even limited to foils. It is, as depicted here and by others, the quality of Magic the Gathering cards. And it should not be this way. Yeah, they, they're almost killed limited, right? Because it's not good for the viewers. Yep. So this is this is something that like, yeah, I agree. Limited is not good for the viewers. But at what point are you willing to sacrifice like everything else to get an extra thousand viewers? Because it's not like you're right. going from 5,000 viewers to a million viewers. You're not becoming League of Legends. This is not magic strength, right? You're going from 5,000 viewers to 6,000, maybe 7,000, right? And it, it, is it worth it? To me, it's not. I, I think you should try to make the tournaments as best I did, as they can be for people who want to play in them, right? And not necessarily just for the people who are watching. So I, I think, I think and, and for example, the invites, Right, they had the discretionary invites and stuff like that, and then they just invited a bunch of players who are not from Magic. Right, they invited, say, Savitz. Right, and, and don't get me wrong, I, I like Savitz a lot. I talked to him during the tournament, he's actually a really nice person, but I don't think he should be put in the MPL. Right, and then you have all these people who are just trying their hardest and just want to be in the system, 
and there's no room for them because you're bringing someone from a different game just to get more viewers, right? And I, I wish they wouldn't do that. I wish they they would, you know, and now that every, everyone is mad about it, right? And, and rightfully so, because if you've been trying for five years and you feel like you finally got there, and you know, oh, there's finally a spot on this thing. Oh wait, it's this person from, this streamer from a different game that's gonna get it. I think right. that feels really bad. Yeah. Right? And so th- that would, I think is the biggest weakness is focusing too much on viewership and not enough on magic strength, which is that people love playing it and they want to be part of the system. 